on today would actually work correctly. I have selected the the T Rex. I'm Rexy, and I know it because Rex is sexy, right? Rex is sexy. Now you will find that I'm currently uh, live streaming from Twitch TV and from YouTube Live, which means that you should be able to watch in high definition. But and I'm running supposed to be running at about 30 frames per second, and my bit rate's about. 3500 so you should be able to get a reasonable picture coming through if you're not getting a decent picture or image coming through I would really appreciate people letting me know so that I can sort of make adjustments right now I am just checking on um, Twitch TV and if it looks like it's coming through that's good news and I'm just checking on YouTube now and if YouTube's coming through correctly as well and that'll, that'll mean that I can just get on with this and look this is my day off this is where I sort of sort of bum around and do my own thing and hang out with everybody and talk Dungeons and Dragons because I like talking about Dungeons and Dragons okay uh, now normally with my uh, live streams I will put the start time down in the description and I'll do the same thing and so uh, Jetwow how's it going hey so I'm going to definitely put the the start time down in the description the sound is coming through fine so I'm going to actually not worry about the ear plug so I'll unplug that now for anybody who's on Twitch TV if I'm not necessarily keeping up to date with your um, your chat it's because I'm still in the process of figuring all that sort of stuff out but uh, hopefully it will work out in the end. That is, that is my understanding. Normally with my live streams I present everything first and then I open it up for um, questions and answers at the end. But that's not the format for today. Just chat along with me. JetWow has got to deal with uh, exams. So I'm going to do my opening and I'm going to get into actually painting the miniature. Because that's why you're here. That's why I'm here. I know that. That's exactly why I'm here. I wouldn't have done it any other <laughs> There's no other reason to do it, right? Wouldn't make any sense. Okay. So, now that that's all established, let's do our opening scene and we'll continue on. Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to show you how I'm going to go about putting together the T-Rex, that's right, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, for Knowles' Marvelous Miniatures. I bought it just recently, well, it's more like a couple of months now. It might be a month. It might be a month ago that I purchased it. And I've been eager to put it together. So today, I have done a bit of preparation in anticipation of doing that. And we're actually going to go through the process. And I'll explain what I did, what I didn't do, and any problems that I had along the way so that you hopefully don't have to suffer those, those problems yourself. I don't know that necessarily you will, but you know, who knows, who knows. Um, I am probably going to keep an eye on the YouTube chat rather than on a Twitch chat more than anything else, just because most people tend to follow me on YouTube and I don't know necessarily that anybody is following me on Twitch TV because the last two or three hours I've been bumping back and forth from those two platforms as I've been testing. Um, but yeah, look, let me know if there are problems with the, the video or the sound at any time, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, okay, cool. All right, so this is Knowles's Marvelous Miniatures. This is the T-Rex. It looks like it's still in the box, but you know me. I was being tricky, and it's not actually in the box. Um, I've actually got it uh, not in the box. It's uh, it's definitely not in the box. I've uh, I've taken it out of the box. It just looks like it's in the box. So I'll just take it off. So this is it. First thing, um, when I opened it up and had a look inside, the pieces, there's only three pieces. There's a base, there's a tail, and there's a body. That's it, there's nothing else, right? So very, very simple, you would think. Um, normally, some of these miniatures have been incredibly difficult when it came to things like... Um, just mold lines and so forth. But actually, this time round, not an issue. You know, seriously, not an issue. Actually, great, in fact. I'm, I'm really, really pleased at the uh, lack of mold lines I've had to deal with, surprisingly. So we'll get rid of that. We can put the T-Rex there. Uh, the boxing can go on the ground. And um, in terms of mold lines, really just around the feet, a bit on the tail, the real issue is going to be not so much securing it to the base, although that doesn't seem very flat. 
I can probably sort that out with green stuff anyway. Um, but yes, there was minimal mold lines. I've only just spotted another one now. Um, so they really are very, very small. I just used some needle files. You can get needle files pretty much anywhere. Um, I think I got mine from a automotive place just because that was the, the easiest place to get them from. Now I would be recommended not to be doing filing inside. How's it going Tasty Basie? Hello, yes, I do apologize to everybody who, who had to deal with all of my bumping in and out as I tried to make sure my live stream would actually function on two platforms. It is a big day today. This is a, uh, this is kind of historic. Um, I've been trying to do something like this for a while. I've built the YouTube channel ages ago, but the Twitch channel has been waiting to come online for regular content. And I really wanted to put my content that was on YouTube onto Twitch. And now I can. Um, and with your help, you'll let me know whether the quality is good enough to be able to maintain it. And if I need to make adjustments, I don't really want to turn it down. I really feel like that would be sort of a bummer. Okay, so I just took off a little bit off the, um, um, off round the uh, tail, but it, actually it's hardly anything. And it's just going to be now a matter of making sure that I can get the tail to fit correctly on the back here. Now that's where I think the problem's going to lie. Uh, the base actually sits pretty good. I, 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 there's not many, there's, there's, no, it's, it's not something to complain about. It's not going to be an issue. So we won't worry about that so much. We'll get rid of this for now. I have so many tools. I know I put in the description I had certain tools, but I've got vastly more tools than that. I just haven't actually told you what they are, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so never mind. Okay, so next it's about trying to make sure this thing fits. Well, that's upside down. That ain't gonna do me any good. You're going to have to probably, see this is what I am concerned about, is getting a good tight fit. You can see there's a big gap there, and it's just not going on. And so I've got to then grab a, a knife, decide where it is that needs to have the, the main bits removed. And I think I'm going to grab my knife and start shaving just a little bit off. So we'll go back to having the bit of paper down, because that's probably a sensible thing. And I'll just start shaving around here. Um, I'll just scrape maybe. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Oh, and that's the sound of a scraping time. Scraping time. We'll just hit the top of it and then try it again. And hopefully I don't have too many shavings floating all over the place and I have to get the vacuum cleaner out. <laughs> yeah, it's always possible though. It's always possible. Now I had somebody, now was it on the Facebook group, I believe, talk about how they had some trouble putting this particular miniature together, the T-Rex the from, uh, basically they wound up with a big gap and they weren't really happy so they had to use a lot of green stuff to fill it up. So I'm going to try not to do that. And okay, let's give that a, fit, a fitting test. Okay, so has that actually got it on any further than it was before? I don't really feel like it has. So let's just slide that off. And we'll scrape underneath. We'll scrape where it's bumsies is. It's bumsies is down to his. And we're scraping away. Oh, some good news. Um, some of the books that I had ordered have arrived. So that means there's some reviews coming. What's that, Jetwell? What are your opinions on using DM screens? I use DM screens. I know that some people dislike them. Um, the rationale for me using a DM screen is more so that I have a way of stopping people from looking at my stuff. Um, and, and, you know, if you've got a, a group of people who you really trust and you don't need to do that, that's awesome. But I've played with lots and lots of different people and it's very hard for them to not start metagaming once they see your notes in the map. It's not so much the, 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 you know, the notes. I always find that it's the, it's the map. As soon as they start seeing the map, they're like, hmm, oh, and they can't help but themselves, you know? They're saying, oh, no, no, I, 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 I'm a I'm, I'm good, good player. I, I won't metagame. But, um, yeah, so I don't like that. I want things to be a surprise for my players. And it's a bit hard to do that 
if they can see what's going on behind the scenes. And also too, um, I want them to think that I'm up to, to naughty mischief. And I put the DM screen there really as a way of um, scaring them. You know, to make them think there's more going on than there really is. <laughs> What's that, Richard? Did you hear about the new D&D Essentials Kit um, set in Fandelva? Yes, I've known about it for a little while. Um, when they uh, talked about it with the uh, Descent into Avernus or the Descent live stream that uh, Dungeons & Dragons or Wizards of the Coast put out, they actually announced it there. So yes, I know about it. It's going to be available only on uh, the Target website uh, until about September, and then it will be available at other locations. And I think that's um, going to be a little bit tricky for me because I, I realised I, I I don't actually you know getting access to Target is actually really difficult if you're in New Zealand. So getting it shipped because it'll be the the, the next um, major set of videos to make for me, right? Lost Mine of Fandalva. Um, may find up, wind up getting a, a back seat to this particular box. And I imagine there's going to be a lot of people who want to um, pick it up early because let's get real. Lost Mine of Fandalva is the most played adventure there is. Okay. All right. So I've been fiddling with this. I'm giving it a good, a good scratch. Um, or also too, now what was it I had to do? I did actually scratch this too to to get rid of some of the primer, because there's primer all over it. Yeah, Richard, it can suck, but you know, look, it is it is it is what it is. You know, what you want to know the funny thing about me um, uh, on uh, doing a live stream on Twitch TV and YouTube at the same time, is that for me to actually get it to work in, in any way remotely useful for you guys to watch, I'm actually, stre I'm actually streaming on... Um, on a uh, on a destination, well, a location or a region that is not my own, because New Zealand is not even available. New Zealand doesn't even come up for the uh, the provider that I'm using for my um, simulcast. You know, when you just <laughs> so so I tried Australia. Australia sucked. <laughs> Whatever's going on in Australia was not great. So I thought, okay, well, Singapore's not too far from Australia. We'll try we'll try Singapore. No. No, no, no. It was a little bit better, but it wasn't that. It wasn't enough. So um, <laughs> I, I had to use a deployment area that was much closer to the rest of you who uh, watch my channel. <laughs> and that was the only way. Okay, so that's only really closed it up a fraction, but that has helped. Oh look, that side's much better. Look at that. There was a huge gap there before. So definitely give it a good, a good old trim. To, to get it to fit. Um, that side may not actually, if that's closed up almost completely, I'm doubtful gonna get this to get be any, be any better on this side. We will give it a good scratch, because why not? I'm here, I'm only gonna get a chance to scratch it um, a couple of times before it's all over, right? So what have I brought with me today for this purpose? As it happens, um, yes, I'm cutting towards myself. If I bleed, okay, YouTube, don't ban my video, please. I'm not intentionally trying to cut myself. Uh, but what I will do is um, I'll tell you what I've got here. So I've got a couple of knives. I've got a, a precision knife, which I'm using now, which is actually doing most of the work. I've got my needle files. I've got a, a pot of water. I've got my liquid green stuff for dealing with the really small gaps because there's going to be a lot of filling going on very shortly. And I've also got um, the standard green stuff. Uh, I've got my super glue. Uh, I've got my sculpting tools. That's my um, Games Workshop um, Citadel sculpting tools. And I've got some baking soda and a little sort of lid. So I can activate the glue, get it to work a little bit faster and get things done so that you guys can see the process hopefully done within the hour. Uh, and then I'm going to be able to truck on off and since I have uh, made arrangements with somebody to purchase a smaller Chessex battle mat that will allow me to I guess do more demonstrations for people on uh, monster tactics, uh, running encounters for some of the pre-made adventures and how to spice them up and obviously the Lost Minor Fandalva will be included. Um, 
but I've got uh, a pre-printed map for one of the locations and I might be able to do some for the rest of them as well. It just depends on how much I can, if I can talk it, talk my brother into doing it since it was kind of painful for him the first time. Okay, so we're just going to scratch this a little bit more. But I think we're actually pretty close to where we needed to be. So that's not actually too much work considering. Could have been much worse, right? I could have been doing this <laughs> for, for a much longer period of time. Okay. All right, let's give it another test. So I'll just get the knife out of the way just in case I wind up jabbing myself with it. And let's see if this fits. Push in tight. Okay, so that is pretty good tight fit on that side there. Underneath there's a bit of a gap. I don't know, can you see that? There's a bit of a gap. There's still a gap on the other side, but that's not really closing up. And I think that I can't really do much about. How would I be able to fix that? I would have to trim material off here. Well, we'll do, we'll do that. We'll see if it works. If it does, then we know how to, you guys know how to actually do the same yourself. So um, I might just cut down onto the mat, the small amounts, and just see if I can't take off that corner a bit. And if that will help, because I've got to be able to twist that um, tail around just a little bit, right? Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, that's good. Very nice. And closed up good on that side, as we already know. Has it closed up any more on this side? Not really. Maybe. Maybe. Let's just have to think about it. How's this going to... It's it's really this bit here. If I can trim the more off that, then I might be able to actually get it to fit tighter. So we'll do that. Oh, just I need a heavier knife. This is where I should have brought my um, my Stanley uh, Classic with me with a heavy blade. Get a real man's tool. Get a real man's tool. <laughs> um, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, let's see. Now I've shaved quite a bit off there. I've been a bit brutal actually, but you're not going to see it, are you? Well, that certainly allows me to twist the tail more round and close up. Does it close up the gap much more than I need it? I think that's pretty good. I think that is as good as I'm going to be able to get. It is tight there. That gap is still existing, but there, there really is. It's, it's minuscule. I think that is where we're at. So that's the solution. So when you're doing this, shave a little bit off the top and the bottom of the peg that goes into the tail and take out some of this this section here so you can twist the tail into it. Okay, so let's move that out of the way and pop that off. This is, this is where it gets interesting because now I've got to get the glue onto it without gluing my fingers to uh, the miniature. So we'll just fold that up so I don't want it with little bits everywhere, which that's exactly what's likely to happen otherwise. And we'll put that over there. Um, I don't want to glue that onto there just yet. Let's just get the tail sorted out. Oh, little bits of pieces. And just dry fit again, make sure. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we'll get some glue on it and see if we can't stick it together. Um, should I put paper down? I'll put paper. Paper's going to come off easy, so not a really big issue, right? I'll put the paper down. Just like so. Happy as Larry. Good news, good news. All right, so that means that uh, actually the, the, the live, live stream actually settled down, surprisingly. If you're over on uh, Twitch TV, um, I do occasionally check there to see your messages. And once I figured out my, um, my LinkedIn chat, then you'll be able to talk to me no matter where you are. Okay, so let's do the, the gluing. Um, and making sure that I've got that. So what do we want to do? I want to go here, around there, too much and we're going to get, it's not going to set I know. And uh, try not to get it on the outside section so I don't have to worry about having to deal with the baking soda too much. Okay, so there's that. And now lid on, 
before I can glue it together and then jam that into place so it sets and then I'll just hold it there and talk with you um, briefly while we wait for it to sort of bond but see that gap's closed up really good I just got to make sure the gap on the other side is closed up really good it's not as as brilliant as I might have hoped but that's why I brought the baking soda along if I hadn't brought the baking soda along, it would have been much more difficult. But we're doing all right. I feel like it's a relatively successful. This is a this has got lots of gaps in it, so there's a lot of filling around the jaw, around the hands. There's a few little holes that need to be filled up that you'll have to sort of get a bit of putty in there. And we're going to be doing that in a second anyway. All right. Okay. So that needs to be activated. So I'm going to get my my tools, I want a tool that's going to allow me to use it like a spatula. So that's kind of be that one, I guess. And then we'll get some of the, get my little lid and baking soda. Let's try the big end. Uh, what kind of info do you have on your uh, DM screen? Um, I use the, D um, the Dungeon Master's um, screen reincarnated. I feel like that is the absolute best option for a dungeon master who is just starting out. I've done a review, a review on that particular um, dungeon master screen anyway. So yeah, that's one. That's the one that I really, really think is um, where it's at. But a lot of dungeon masters make their own dungeon master screens and stick different things on there as they go. But that's the one I, I prefer. Um, the original one for Dungeons and Dragons 5e just didn't have all of the information. What I find about the reincarnated one is even if I'm really tired and I'm still running the game, I, I can still run the game because I, it's got all the information you could possibly hope for there. Okay, so I am just going to let this stuff sort of settle into the gap and it should sort of activate. I don't want to put too much glue around the outside because it then it bulks it all up and you wind up with all this extra stuff you've got to try and file or cut off. And I would prefer to do all of that with my with my green stuff. Um, so that has got the. T I'm pretty sure that tail on that side is well and truly done. And let's see. It's there's a there's just a little bubble there I was trying to pop, and then we'll just put the powder on there. So yeah, that would be the one I would advise people. If you are a, um, an experienced dungeon master, you will have your own. But if you're a new dungeon master or you're playing late, late at night and you, you tend to forget stuff like I do, um, then I find that the, the reincarnated dungeon master screen is a, a good option. Hey, it's really good if you do ask questions in live chat, so feel free to do so. If you've got your own hobby stuff to do, then do that along with me because I totally understand it's valuable time. You don't always get all the time you want to do these sorts of things, so by all means... And you can ask questions, right? Ask questions. Absolutely ask questions. Okay, so that powder is going to cause me problems. I can, I know it now because this is the last time, the last time I had to use baking soda on something and then I had to start putting um, green stuff on it. It just didn't want to stick because I had to wash it all off. And that's, that's the drag is uh, having to wash it all off. Um, but so far... Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, so it's fused in place. And surprisingly, I haven't stuck my fingers to this thing as well. Cool. All right, so now that that's done, we'll get rid of you. We don't need you anymore. And we've got that sitting there. So what I will do is I will just grab my water. I do actually have some water with me. Make sure my super glue lid is back on correctly. Otherwise, it goes hard and I've got to go and buy some more. I don't want to do that. So put that out of the way. And is my lid. Open my lid up. If I get in the way, I do apologize. All right, so first thing first, that is just give that a quick wipe down. I would have used a toothbrush, but um, I'm pretty sure my toothbrushes are way, way off. I don't want to use the toothbrush I use at night to clean my teeth. I'm, I mean a disposable toothbrush, one of those. Okay, so that should hopefully get most of the, the cack off from the baking soda and the glue so that I can actually um, fill it. You can see that tail gap is pretty much insignificant now. 
It's much better than it was. Hi, Joe. How's it going? <clears throat> hey, Fred and everybody. Yeah. So, Joe, <laughs> you're, you're lucky, man. You missed all of the uh, the rigmarole as I tried to figure out how to uh, live stream on Twitch TV and YouTube at the same time. It was a mission. It really was. It took me ages to get it sorted out <laughs> and a lot of hassle. But we got there in the end, not because my um, my internet is bad or anything, because it's actually good enough to be able to do it, but it's just where I am in the world, I guess. Um, okay, so I just need to clean my fingers. Let's dump that over there. And a bit of a clean off with the rag. And I think this is the time to deal with the base. Sticking it on the base is... Oh no, I don't want to do that actually. I want to do the base last. I want to just deal with all of the the putty nonsense. And I'm going to use that liquid green stuff because it's really, really thin. Because well, most of these gaps are so small, they're hardly even going to be noticed. I can't, there, there's not a single gap on this miniature, really, that I think I need to really worry about too much. So, um, oh, no, I, might, I might leave that on there. Is I going to leave that on there? No. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to paint it with the green stuff. Jetwell. Um, NZ equals end of the world. That's right. Yes. Or, <coughs> just let me say it in the, the, uh, the ASS of the world, the, the, the rear of the world, the uh, back side of the world, that part of the world. That's where it is. Okay, so what do I need? I need a brush. Why don't I not have a brush with me? I knew I was going to be using green stuff, and I don't have a brush. Good thing I brought stuff. <clears throat> I know it's down here somewhere. Hang on, fumaging. Wahoo, I found my brushes. Okay, I need the scummiest, most repulsive brush I could find, because once it I put green stuff on it. She's all over Grover. Okay, that one will do. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> now this stuff, I can't say is the best, but in this particular situation, it's going to probably work fine. And I'm going to give it a good hard shake, I think, first. <clears throat> it's very liquidy. Liquidy. Okay, so. So we'll start low and we'll work our way high. Whoa, she's, she's some solid stuff there. Okay, so let's just, might have to move it around a little bit. Okay, so let's start down the bottom here. Down the bottom here, there, most of those little cracks are sort of insignificant. Down by the foot there, there is a bit of a crack, but I don't actually think that's actually going to detract from the miniature. I actually, I'm fine with that being there. Um, around the tail, the tail is almost good as gold, really. Um... That little arm section there, just just a tiny little bit. Ooh, let's see if we can get it in there. Okay, so I might need another brush to move it around with, or like a little spatula, like this little spatula. Let's just go in there. There we go, because I don't want to get a lot in there. This stuff does shrink, right? Hi, Joe. About to finish uh, Cragmore Castle in about five minutes. My whole party is listening to you right now, so no spoilers. I won't say anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to have a good time, Cragmore Castle. Very good, very good. <clears throat> it is a good location. To be fair, it is a really good location to have in an adventure. I'm supposed to be going and playing Dungeons & Dragons today myself, actually. Um, I haven't responded to the Facebook group. I have been a little bit sick. It was only a matter of time, right, before the lurgy got me, and it did. I, I didn't get really, really sick. It sort of, like, partially affected me. So, um, but if I go and play Dungeons & Dragons, I've got to drive for almost an hour, and I'm a little worried that if I go and we play, then I wind up just overtired and unable to drive home safely. So I'm still thinking about whether I should do it or not. And there's a good chance I may not go and leave it for another week. And also, too, I've, I've got a friend who has um, serious health issues. And if I were to pass something on, that would be really bad for him. And we don't need that. The sorts of things he's dealing with are far more, 
far worse than I am, so um, I don't really want to get him sick. And he's, and when he gets sick, he gets sick really bad. Okay, so that that green stuff. I mean, it looks bad, but actually, I think it's not nearly as bad as as you might you might imagine. I can actually use a cloth, you know, with this. You can get like a little bit of water, and you can sort of dab it off, rather than just leave it where it is. So we'll dab off. And it's fine. And we can do that just around the edges so that it sort of bleeds in with the rest of the miniature. And that's not too bad. That's the arm done. We haven't even done the tail yet. The joints where the legs are, there's a little bit of uh, stuff there is going on as well, so we'll deal with that. And of course the jaw, the jaw line, one part of the jaw is not that great. Um, so how are we going to do this? We're going to go in there and just work it round. This stuff is supposed to work better once you've applied it, like most fillers, right? Usually with most fillers, particularly that are sort of of a liquid nature, you've got to do it in more than one coating. And it's the same thing's going to apply with this one. Okay. All right, so come around here and just get it onto the miniature first and then spread it with my spatula. That's good. I don't really feel like there's too much really needed down the bottom there. Put some there. The stuff still dries really fast, so you can't muck around. You've got to get it done. All right, so let's deal with the worst part of that jaw. And can I get it right round? Yep, we can. We can just... Rub it off, rub it off, rub it off. And now, still with the section here, which doesn't look too bad actually. I feel like that, that arm is, is mostly sort of done. It is still gonna shrink. Let's get rid of that hair. That the hair doesn't need to be there. Go, get rid of you. You're you're gone, you're gone. And Yeah, I feel like the that's that's fine. We'll leave that there, and now let's just make sure the jaw that I've I've just worked on isn't too messed up. Um, do I need to actually dab off anywhere? Let's just dab off there. No, that's good. Okay, and then let's just spread this. Now, if you were wondering why I hadn't been doing any painting, because I, I, I did like like five, four sessions, four, four days of painting in a row at one point with um, Xanathar's Beholder. And um, I thought, well, actually, I'm going to give it a break and I'll come back to that. And I'll still do that like once a week. On the day where I just don't want to have to think about preparing material for the channel or anything like that, I'll still come back and do that sort of thing. Um, because it's it's much easier and more relaxing for me and it's something I do actually like doing. Okay, so this is there enough? No, I can I think I'm gonna get a bit more on the jaw. So I'll open that up again. I can imagine one of these lasting a very, very long time. So I don't think you'd ever have to replace the thing. Not unless it all goes off. Okay, that is going on very, very thick. Actually going to worry too much about that, actually. I might, that might be fine. <laughs> that might be fine. Okay, so the jaw, was there anything else with the head that I needed to contend with? Not really. No. No. No, that's good. All right, let's, um, let's deal with, um, let's deal with, is it the tail I need to deal with? Yeah, probably do need to deal with the tail. Let's go around the tail. 
So I'll apply just a little bit. I'm just going to get it on. If it sets a little bit, that's sort of helpful. My understanding is you're supposed to give it a full certain, a certain amount of period to set before you apply the next lot, but no. Nah. Okay. I applied quite a lot here, didn't I? Let's just dig out some of that and put it somewhere else. Put it on the tail. That's what I'll do. I'll put it where I need it. And then work my way around the neck. Oh, there we go. Tell you, I've had to make some very, very scary decisions recently. And, um, you know, you, sometimes you come to a point in your life, and you think, oh, I could just keep doing the same thing I was doing before, or I can try to do something different this time around. But it's always risky, so taking a big risk. I'm used to taking risks, but I always usually have like a backup plan going as well. This time, I'm trying to have a backup plan, but my backup plan is not really working that well, so really I've just got the my first attempt. What does that mean? Oh, that, that means that, yes, Fred is seriously considering going full-time on, um, on video, and not so much on just... Um, YouTube but on Twitch TV that means you will see a lot of content coming through and yes I will edit the stuff it's just trying to find a, uh, a nice balance between the two okay so that that's still got the detail on the neck I feel like that's actually pretty pretty good so we'll, we'll leave that we're gonna go back to the tail and deal with the tail and I'm just gonna clean this off before it sets, there we go. Cool, nice one, awesome. It's working out pretty well. I'm, I'm really, really happy with the results so far. Wouldn't have guessed it. Wouldn't have guessed it. But then again, a bit of faith. That's all. It, isn't it? That's all it takes, right? A little bit of faith, and you're all good. Okay, all right. So let's grab the green stuff. Deal with the tail a bit more. My, 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 and then just apply that on there. So one of the reasons for getting this smaller Chessex mat is so that I can actually fit it on my desk top. My desk is big, but it ain't that big, um, and I've got one of the larger ones. And the, the rationale is really so that I can do more videos around showing people how to play in Dungeon Master. And you, now people who used to watch my channel and liked the, um, the, the short form content, I have for some time been trying to figure out if I can do short form content and make it work. Because YouTube doesn't really like short form content, but YouTube, you know, people who watch videos do. And, it, and channels don't like short form content that much either because they don't get very much out of it. But I, I, I know how I can actually do short form content as a live stream. I, pro I actually proved it to myself the other day. I was really surprised. I thought, no, it can't be done. It's too hard. Um, it's not like two and a half minutes. It's more like four minutes. But I can do something that's relatively short, to the point, gets it done, and in and out in about four minutes. Which means that those live streams that were a little bit longer will eventually get released as a edited version and um, and then the live stream um, content will eventually get unlisted and you won't be able to watch it anymore and uh, it'll just be the, um, the final product and you will get some of those short form rules videos particularly for those of you who just want to show stuff to your um, your players or a mate or something like that or friends and help them out so yes, we'll be doing lots and lots of that. Okay, so that is that section. Oh, don't want to. Get, it's getting messy. The stuff just goes everywhere. Messy stuff. 
Okay, and we just spread that. I'm going to use my little um, wet paper towel to help spread and smooth out the and feather it in. It's working out reasonably well so far. Okay, so let's just give that a clean. And moving over to where is it? Oh, that's right. That's the little. This is my. This is my towel. This is my paper towel. So we'll go grab that and then just work our way along there. So for any of you who were really worried that I was going to be moving to um, Twitch TV live only, no, the intention was not just to do that. It was actually to do both. It was just getting my head around how to do it and whether it could be done successfully. And um, I have so far done reasonably well at trying to keep my live streams of a ra relatively high level. And that's really been a result of lots and lots of testing. <laughs> and it is pretty hard sometimes to make it come out right. Okay. That. No, nah, that's good enough. That's good. I'm just going to leave that. That tail, I mean, I suppose I could revisit it. But at, at this present time, I think it's good. So we're all cool there. I just need a quick drink of water. <clears throat> and now it is time to deal with the leg. Now the legs have got gaps in them. The gaps that I'm likely to see the most are on top. So I'm probably not going to deal with the ones underneath quite so much. So we're going to apply some of this in here now. And then it's the top section there. And I'm going to have to apply a bit more because it, even though it looks like it's sort of, it's green and done, she's not really green and done. She just looks green and done. There's a big gap underneath that, um, that dinosaur's backside, mate. Right there, in there. Can't really see it, but um, maybe you can. Maybe you can. Anyway. <clears throat> Let us uh, flick it around and coat over here down this way I have probably frustrated a lot of people with all the testing I did today I do apologize I, I know that's but it's always better to test live while you're streaming rather than any other time that's my view anyway okay, cool look at this uh, where did I, I just did I handle something I wasn't supposed to let's find the big hole underneath can I get the green stuff, the green in there? Can I get that in there? Yep. Well, it looks like it's filled. It's not really filled, but it looks like it's filled. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Sorry I'm late. The tech was uh, working. Via... No, you don't have to. Matt, you do not need to apologize. I, I have been um, torturing people with all of my testing. So that I could figure out how to uh, live stream on Twitch TV and YouTube at the same time. So there's been like, I don't know, is it eight different live streams in the past three hours while I try to figure everything out and make everything work properly. It was actually really, really difficult. And do I need to get in between the legs? Oh, it's clean between the legs. <laughs> All right, so... Let's clean up around there. That's actually fine. I don't think I need to do very much with that. I might just put a little bit more on the top there so I don't have to revisit there. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's revisit it. And I might have to still apply some more of this because the stuff shrinks. This is sort of like, I've been told that this green stuff is better for te um, texturing than anything else than filling gaps. And I would agree, but because the dinosaur has texture already, it's really not going to affect it that much. If anything, it's going to help. It's the perfect time. It's when you've got a smooth surface and you've got to um, fill the gap that it's going to be a problem, right? But somebody, something like this, with all this rough skin, 
is going to be a piece of cake. All right, so that is good. We're just going to move that around just a little bit. Sort of blend it in a little bit. Shift it. Shift it, baby, shift it. Shift it, baby, shift. Shift it, baby, shift. Hey, Matt, those requests for videos that you asked for, um, I'm probably, look, I've got a bunch of things I'm supposed to do for my patrons. So they're probably going to come first. The, th the stuff regarding um, the Dungeons and Dragons Adventurers League, I'm not really the right person. I used to be the person who knew about all that sort of stuff. But um, So it might be a little while before, before you see anybody because I'm going to have to go and see somebody to ask them that stuff because half of it I don't know myself. And there's a lot of research involved. It's not like a, a quick, fast, easy video. Um, but um, yeah, I will, since that seems to be something that potentially at least a few people were interested in, I will I will venture to find somebody who knows more about it than I do and I'll get them to explain it to people rather than try to do it myself where I would just botch it up. Okay, so that, see the top of that leg looks good. And that green stuff has actually hidden that quite well. And down that, that gap, you can it's unseeable. The, the tail, the tail, yeah, not quite so great in terms of hiding it. I don't know if I can actually get much more on there. It is probably just going to shrink away. We will try it. We'll give it, a, we'll give it another go. While we're here, we might as well. We've covered most of the areas that needed to be covered. And pop in a little bit more of the green stuff on there. And then shuffle it round and then apply. And then I'll shift it round after. Yo ho ho! There we go. And all right, so I think that is probably all I can do. It is, it is most likely going to be better to do this in two or three applications rather than a single application. I just don't see you being able to stop the, um, the green stuff from uh, shrinking. And I could have used the other stuff and rolled it up and made it that way, but I've always found it doesn't go well into a very small space. Always struggle to get it in there. Just wants to fall out. So. And then down that way a little bit more. Blend it in. Try to keep the texture in the tail. And the shape. That we've got okay all right okay so that is the green stuffing that is the green stuff done bring on the green stuff so next let's glue it to the base and who would have imagined this video might actually finish on time like an hour we go for an hour and then we stop it might actually go for now. So I'll just get my glue and we'll glue the base on. Hopefully that is going to work easily and not going to be difficult. <clears throat> okay, super glue and quick look. Make sure that it's going to fit correctly and then line it up where it's going to be. And it's just going to be a matter of apply to the miniature and then poof, she's done. Hold it in place. I don't really need to worry about doing the um, the baking soda thing in that, that situation. I feel like that would be just ridiculous. And then we'll just turn you round. Turn ye round. Turn ye round. Turn ye... Oh, did I just stick my finger all over the green stuff? Yes, I did. It's getting a bit messy. Getting a bit messy. Um, oh. Did I just bump something? Yep. Yes, I did. I should have glued the base on first uh, now why what have I got to deal with here this is see this is where I should have thought about this more 
I haven't thought about the fact that I haven't actually scraped the base, which I should have done. Otherwise, it's not going to stick out. Eh? All it's doing is sticking to glue. So it's going to come off for sure. So where's another piece of paper? Got one more piece of paper. So we'll grab that now. And we're going to use that. And we'll do a scrape. Really, really quick. In a rather awkward and unusual position. It's not really how you should have done it, Fred. You should have done it the other way around. Like, do it before. You have to glue it on. But you haven't. No, you didn't, Fred. Okay. And it's not too bad. Got that. Take all the little fluffy bits off. And what I'm going to do with this bit here? That is definitely not. It's definitely not resin. That is definitely paint. So we'll just scratch that there. Scratch around there. Almost done. And then along these bits because that's probably going to be holding some of it as well. And that. My friends, I think, is probably got it. Let's just get rid of all the loose bits. Yep, some loose bits around there, but we, we'll be fine. It's just not even going to see that. It's all going to be just hidden. Okay, so remove this. Try not to mess up the location too much, Fred. Keep the vacuuming to a minimum. Okay, and then back to the base. Back to the super glue thing, pop off the lid without sticking your fingers to it. And apply one. I know some people will say you're applying far too much, and I realize that, but. I'm never really convinced about super glue. Okay, so now this is this is the tricky bit. Because I have like seconds to get it in position before she's set, pretty much. Oh, almost stuck my fingers on it. Oh, I think I almost have. Alright, in the in the water, Fred. Get the glue off your fingers before you wind up setting to it. <laughs> oh dear. Alright. So I'm going to just turn that and hold that down just for a little bit. Won't be very long, but I think we've pretty much got it set and ready. So what do I need to do after this? Well, you can reprime around where the, the putty is if the putty is fine. I, I still think what's likely to happen is it's going to, it's going to shrink. And I'm going to have to go back and apply a little bit more. Um, I've done this before with the Xanatha Beholder using the green stuff. And I actually didn't have to do anything like that. The... I only had to apply it once, and she's she was good as good as gold. So I'm I'm going to hold out and hope that that's in fact what's going to happen this time round. And if it does, I'm going to say, yay, awesome, good news. <laughs> okay, so there it is. I think that now will give you a reasonable view of this thing, so you can see it. If I can just line myself up properly. And move it into 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 view so you can see what's going on. So this is this is the assembly of the T Rex for Knowles's marvelous miniatures. So if you enjoyed watching me or hanging out with me while I did this, then awesome. Um, please consider uh, watching more of my videos. I have many of videos, lots and lots, and most of them wind up getting archived on YouTube because that's where I started. So if you are new to my sort of stuff then you can check me out, out on YouTube on How to d, &D. Uh, I've got stuff for players and dungeon masters. I've got stuff on painting and crafting, if you're more into painting and crafting. And if you're watching this, you probably are more into painting and crafting. Um, I have a Patreon page where you can support me, so I keep doing more videos like this if you're really interested. And that will also get you um, access to exclusive content, 
Um, and also, uh, I'm more likely to make videos on the content that you ask me to make if you are a patron. I have affiliate links to Book Depository and Amazon where you can buy stuff online. And that's always helpful. And uh, yeah, all I can say is, uh, what is it? Is it share, like, and subscribe? Do those things. Hit uh, hit the bell button if there's a bell button. Hit the heart, hit the, hit the thumbs up, whatever it is that you're dealing with. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.